Okay, so I have a lot of things to cover in this video, and I'm going to try and go through them uh, in like an order that kind of makes sense. So I'm going to be talking about the future of this, this series. Don't worry, I'm not stopping it. I'm just changing a few things about the setup and the format, as you might have guessed from the fact that this is a vlog and not scripted. Uh, and I'm going to put that information at the end of the video uh, because I don't think everyone will care. But there we go. That's That stuff's going to go at the end. But first, I'm going to talk about the show Mahoraba Heartful Days and why it's now in my top 10 anime of all time. Uh, I'm not the, 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 I'm no Jalen Harris, right? I haven't seen every anime of all time. I've, I've seen about 200 something shows, depending on whether or not you count dropped shows like mid 200s ish but i would consider myself quite well versed in anime and uh Mahoraba is one of especially slice of life shows uh i am a huge fan of slice of life and Mahoraba is one of the best slice of life shows i've ever seen uh it's, it's a and i'm going to be talking about why uh, but first i want to talk about the, why the format of this video is different uh aside from logistical reasons um part of me uh, and the reason for that is because this show is just too good i couldn't write a good script about it i couldn't write a script to do this this series justice um every time i tried to write a script i would end up bouncing around I, i've tried to write it three times i ended up bouncing around between different topics because every time i would start to praising one thing about the show i would get distracted and and switch to something else and when i tried to re read it back the whole script would feel completely out of uh what's the word it, it would feel out of whack it wouldn't feel like it fit together very well because th i just wanted to talk about so many different things uh about this show uh and if i focused in on one too much i'd feel like i was missing out on other stuff really if i wanted to do a full video on this it would it would take me a month to write and edit and record because it would be that and it would be an hour long right so i'm just gonna try and make this video uh where i i unscripted just basically gush about why this show is so great to me and um, why you should watch it right now. Uh, and that's the first thing, the first point I want to make is that I'm going to be spoiling this show and this is not really, like, it's not a show that will completely fall apart if you've heard spoilers, but I'm giving this, like, this is a 9 out of 10 show for me. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough if you're a fan of Slice of Life. I mean, I, you may not like it as much as I do, which I will get to, uh, like the reasons why I think I would like it more than most people, but uh, nevertheless, I would highly recommend you go watch the show before this video. Uh, if you really don't don't care about stuff like that, uh, or this show doesn't seem interesting to you, then of course just watch the video. Or if you, you just want to go further and see what the appeal is, uh, I'm happy to talk about that first. So let's get into it. Mahoraba is a a slice of life uh, about the inhabitants of a certain uh, lodgings. Uh, about a, a guy who moves to the city uh, to go to art school and study art and moves into these these lodgings with a bunch of wacky and colorful characters uh, and uh, it's it's a for some inexplicably for some inexplicable reason it's tagged as shonen uh, on Mao uh, when it's absolutely not a shonen in any it, I don't understand why it's tagged that way it doesn't make any, it has no similarities to shonen shows um, but I'm going to talk about what I just said, which was the cast of wacky characters, because that really is what takes the show over the edge. Slice of life shows that don't have much of a plot. When you remove plot, you basically end up focusing on when when you remove like a by plot I mean a continuous classical narrative. You end up having to narrow down into drama, which is strongly related to. Uh, well, okay, well, I'll put it this way. Drama and comedy, right? I'm doing it this way on purpose because both of them depend on characters, which is why I love Slice of Life so much because a good Slice of Life has to absolutely nail characters. A good Slice of Life means that it is enjoyable character, like in very well-written characters and the drama comes from their interactions and the comedy comes from their, like everything stems from the characters. So Slice of Life is 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 the perfect distillation of everything i like about narrative media or stories which is really to hear about interesting characters interesting people uh so why what does what does maradaba do do right well first of all 
a, a lot of shows that that start off with like a sort of slice of lifey, more lighthearted thing, uh, will will tip over at some point, usually halfway through episode three, into a uh, really corny drama and really overdone drama. This was my problem with Air. This is also my problem with Moe Tan and a bunch of other shows. Before they've really set up the characters, they're already trying to make us. Uh, they cheat by by giving them really tragic backstories that are just blown completely out of proportion. This show, just like all the best shows, uh, Slice of Life shows, Hidamari Sketch, K-On type shit, so so K-On, everyone knows, you don't get to the, like, really make you cry level drama until the last episodes of the second season. So you love these characters by the time you're expected to care about them. I don't want a show that, that expects me to care about characters uh, when I've barely spent any time with them, I can't feel those emotions are legitimate. They, those emotions feel artificial and forced. This show doesn't doesn't fall into that trap. This show does it perfectly. Uh, Hidamari sketch even more so waits for like five seasons <laughs> before he gets to the serious drama. Um, but but one of the problems with with these dramas is that let me take a hit from the vape real quick. Is that they they always write them to be overblown, corny, and at or like cheesy high school romance type of drama. Uh, whereas this show takes a much more grounded approach, which really makes the characters far more relatable. Uh, so uh, and and let's let's talk about those characters more now. Uh, though this goes back to why I said I don't know if everyone's going to love these these characters as much as I do. In my review of Negima, I mentioned that uh, the 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 type of shows that exist, you know, you could maybe see this as a subversion or or deconstruction or a, a something bounced off of the the uh, harem genre because it's one guy in an apartment full of girls. Except there's actually another guy. Johnny, but I'll, I'll I'll talk about that in a second. But really, it's not harem show because uh, not all the girls are trying to fuck him all the time. Like that's not the main thrust of the show. That's not the main conflict of the show. Um, there's one romance between him and one specific other person, which is done really well. Uh, well, I say one specific other person again. We'll cover that in a second. So so these characters, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk you through why these characters work. Uh, so, in my Negima review, I said these shows live and die on having a wide breadth of characters uh, and and hoping that they hit someone's specific fetishes. And I talked about what I mean by fetishes, right? Uh, and Negima does this by just having 35 characters. So, one of them's going to appeal to you. Now, now, this show has far less characters, but happens to hit on a lot of my preferences and people I can really strongly relate to, characters I can strongly relate to. So I'm going to describe some of these characters now, and if they sound like someone you would be interested in spending time with, then you're going to love this show. So first of all, we've got Johnny, who I mentioned earlier, the other guy in the apartment. Now, why is he called uh, Johnny? Strange name. Well, that's because Johnny is actually a sock puppet who lives on the hand of another guy, but this other guy never talks. He only speaks through the sock puppet. <laughs> He's a ventriloquist. Um, then, uh, and the sock puppet refuses to be addressed by the, the other guy's name. He only goes by Johnny, and he refuses to acknowledge like that the other guy is 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 him. He the other guy is a separate person. He's barely even paid attention to in the show. Then there's a uh oh one other thing that makes these characters so great is the excellent character design, uh, and and uh, general art style of the show. Uh, which I should have up. I'm sorry about this. Very, how how unprofessional of me that I didn't even get my notes up. Um, okay. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, so art director is uh, Junichi Higashi, who's worked on shows like Cowboy Bebop and Escaflone, and the character designer is Masahiro Fuji, Fu, Masahiro Fuji, who... Uh, really like this is based on a manga he did a really great job of translating the the art from from the manga to to uh, uh, the anime style uh 
and actually, fun fact, these two have actually worked together in the past on a little show called Alien 9. Uh, although the character designer was a, was a key animator on that show, not not designing the characters. But I, I can see a little bit of very subtle Alien 9 influence on this show. Uh, and I love Alien 9. So if, if you like Alien 9, there's a little bit of trivia for you. Um, now, the director is a Shinichiro, Kimu- Shinichiro Kimura. And uh, he is... Uh, He's clearly very likes these character designs, just like I do. I think there's some excellent, excellent character designs. Uh, and the director knows he's got some top-notch shit because he's constantly doing close-ups of the girls' faces where they're looking, or all the characters' faces, where they're looking directly into the camera. Uh, he really knows that these designs are very expressive and just pleasant to look at and is has faith that, that like to put them right center screen looking directly at you, which is just a joy to look at. Um, Kimura is is interesting because he's a uh, he's worked on like the sort of shows you'd expect from like a slice of life director. He 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 did storyboards on Kiss Exis and uh, so I, I, oh fucking what's it called? Not to love the uh, the other one that I get confused. Data Live. He worked on Data Live as well. But then also uh, he directed an episode of Legend of the Galactic Heroes, <laughs> and he also directed a direct an episode of Gundam at some point. Uh, so he's got some real write, like directing chops, which is sick. Uh, the writer's also got some uh, interesting credits, but you can just look this up on now if you want afterwards. Um, uh, but yeah, so so that's some weird, interesting connections. I got completely sidetracked there. Uh, so the character designs make these 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 characters <laughs> uh, like they really emphasize their personalities. So after Johnny, we've got uh, there is a. Uh, a pink-haired girl with glasses. This fit, hits on one of my particular fetishes. I love, I love pink hair. I love glasses, and she's a very interesting character. She's, she kind of is, is the sort of um, always or, or regularly drinking kind of Misato-ish character. A little bit Misato, but less, less motherly, less, less old, less of a milf uh, character. A little bit of a. Nobue Ito vibes. Nobody of Nobue Ito vibes from her, uh, and uh, th- th- she's also not a one-dimensional character. You see, in every other show, this is why this is so great. In every other show, she would have just been like, "Hey, she's always partying. She's always going into the main character's room and getting him to drink when he should be doing university work, right?" Uh, but in this show, uh, she at oh yeah, and she and also in every other show, she would be constantly trying to fuck the main character. In this show. She has a grounded backstory where, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, um, uh, in the past, her, she, um, she was in love with a boy in high school. Uh, they were in a relationship uh, and um, the boy moved away to a different country and um, she is, is stuck in Japan uh, in a long distance relationship with this guy. Uh, who she's she wants to be able to get over because she can't move on because she's still in a she still loves him, but um, also it causes troubles for her because she can't see him. So she's exchanging letters with him and uh, 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 and uh, gets very interesting that she doesn't stick with the same character all the time like a real person. She changes depending on her environment. So when she like she's generally seems to be kind of. A little bit tomboyish, kind of like very upbeat, very uh, kind of like that. But but then when she receives one of these letters, she's she's all she's all lovey dovey, grabbing the letters, reading it intently, like you know, like a real person would be when they got a letter from their long distance boyfriend. Uh, except she, it's kind of torturing her because she she she's in love with this guy, but at the same time she can't see him. So she's like, she's trying to move on. She's trying to replace him. But she can't, and it partly is why she's always trying to distract herself with drinking and partying. That's a like I know people like that in real life. Like that's a that's something that this is not the sort of writing you expect from from a generic, uh, from your generic like harem show or slice of life show. This is a step above that shit, right? Next character, the the main heroine of the show is a is the blue haired girl. And uh, she has multiple personality disorder, so she is actually a bunch of different girls in in one one 
one package and uh, this was actually going to be the topic of, of my original video was going to be how she's a post tsundere oh that reminds me of the pink haired girl the pink haired girl is a tsundere but not to the main character this is genius when you see flashbacks of her with her old boyfriend she was a tsundere to him but she's not a tsundere in the show that's genius <laughs> You can never get well-rounded characters like that with multiple, like, people act differently around different people. You never see that shit in anime because you only see it from the main character's perspective. Um, so, the, the blue-haired girl, uh, she has multiple personalities, each of which is distinct. Uh, and this is quite genius because, because you get the gap moe of her different personalities while also getting each personality as their own character. So you've got her like true personality. She's the landlord of the place. She's she's kind of a um slightly ditzy, like a you you know you kind of your classic main character type girl. You, you're kind of Yui archetype. You're kind of Akari from um from Aria type of archetype. A little bit like that. Uh, very very not like not quite as airheaded as Yui or Akari maybe maybe more like a hmm it's kind of hard she does she's 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 a little more ojo sama esque but yeah, she's she's cute in this form and this is the form that the main character falls in love with her in however she also has a bunch of other personalities inside her each of whom are distinct so uh by the way towards the beginning of the show they mention like she doesn't know she has multiple personalities. Is that the other members of the 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 place that she's the the, the apartments how keep like hide it from her. They 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 hide the fact that she changes from her to keep her innocent. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake! The entire show is just going to be her trying to figure out that she has multiple. No, they don't do that bullshit. Which is so I'm so thankful for that because I I hate things like that where it's all just like misunderstandings and yeah they don't do that uh so the other characters inside of her are a 10 year old girl who is very cute uh but still legal because it's still <laughs> whatever uh a, a fucking like yakuza delinquent character who's you know the sort of ah gonna teme gonna yara you know does the rolling ass thing i love shit like that uh but she's like the thing is that each of these characters isn't just like the archetype that they would be so like that the yakuza girl the the konayaro character konayaro teme kuso type of situation i got to plug my laptop in um pod, pardon me the technical difficulties here um isn't just like a stereotypical well she she has that but she's also got more depth to her character like you'll see if you watch the show i don't i don't want to just spend this whole time dryly analyzing everyone but but that is that is something interesting and also there's there's a like a it's good trust me there's especially and this is where it really gets so so far we've seen like these are some interesting characters but but where's the specifically appealing to no thank you's autism one of her alternate personalities, and you're not going to believe this because this is so perfectly targeted at me that it's almost unbelievable. One of her personalities is an autistic card magician who is too depressed and self-conscious to talk to anyone. So no one's ever heard her, her name because she's she, every time she comes out, she locks herself in a room and just practices card magic all the time. She's literally me. <laughs> She's literally me. You don't understand. Yeah, and and the card magic in the show is re like semi realistic. I have one nitpick, which is that in the show, um, I'm gonna have to put the mic down to demonstrate this. Uh, that th that she teaches the main character some 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 like card flourishes, and uh, the two tricks that she teaches him is it's kind of like a little routine. I will demonstrate the routine for you now. I probably will mess it up, which will is actually supports my point. So she teaches him this sort of routine. It goes like this. Also, this is the only anime review you will ever see uh, where I am where someone is capable of demonstrating a card magic trick that was in the show.
That's it. That's what she teaches him. And in the show, he really struggles with the riffle shuffle at the end is what he keeps failing at. Um, so so he's, he's trying to do the riffle shuffle, which is this bit. Which is actually in real life very easy to do. You could probably learn it in, in half an hour. But he easily manages to do the, the, the spread on the arm, which is far harder. As you can see, I was very sloppy with doing it. Like he nails that every time, but that's actually much harder than than the riffle shuffle because you gotta balance it on your arm. Uh, so that's the only slight nitpick of the show. But other than like the car the cardistry they do is actually pretty realistic. Oh, oh, fuck! Except the mistake everyone makes in every TV show ever, which is getting riffle. I mean, getting uh, dribbles and springs confused. So ev this this might trigger you if you know this and watch any animated show ever. So, so there's I, I have to fix these cards now because some of them are oh whatever. So there's two tricks in in there's two two little flourishes. One of them's called a dribble. One of them's called a spring. A spring is this one. You'll definitely know it. That's a spring, and this is a a dribble. Right. Now the difference between these is with a spring, the cards bend like this. The cards bend concave, and then you spring them out off of your thumb. Whereas with a riffle, the cards bend convex, and you just let them dribble down. So I said riffle, I meant dribble. Right? And every show will show people springing, like every animated show you'll see, even like the, the, the animated Batman series does this, show people drib springing by doing this, which is physically impossible. It's not how cards work. That you spring by doing this and launching them out, and that show, this show does that too. But other than that, the card, the cardistry is pretty realistic. So now you can tell why I like this show so much. That character is, it's like it was exactly made for me. And now let's get on to more characters that were exactly made for me. So we have. Uh, the occult, my, my, possibly my favorite character, definitely up there. Um, the occult club leader, who is a masochist. Now, you know that I have a thing for girls with black hair, long black hair, or short black hair is also good, who do like occult shit. It's like the best shit ever. I'm telling you, it's the best shit ever. She gets insulted and she's like, yes, insult me more. She has like a very monotone voice. Everyone in this show is autistic as fuck, which is actually a thematic relevance, which I'll get to later. Um, and, and she's like the leader of the occult club. And the occult is real in this show. Like she's doing fully summoning demons and shit. It's great. Also, they name drop Alistair Crowley, which is based. Uh, uh, so that's, that's a good character. See, she's like a side character. In any other show, she would she would like like this is the quality of the character. They have so many good characters that some of the best ones are just side characters who aren't even in the main cast. All right, and then possibly this is probably my favorite character uh, uh, is the super depressed girl. There is a a a woman who is is very depressed and realistically depressed. She she's. She she does something which a lot of depressed characters in anime don't do, uh, which is that that she she's constantly tired, uh, and she like everything seems to take more effort for her than for everyone else. Uh, so she she's falling asleep all the time trying to do basic stuff, which is something I can definitely relate to. Like everything's she she'll literally like try to stand up and be too tired and just sort of, like I've done that. Every depressed person has, has been there. Like she's realistically depressed, and she has a, a daughter as well. And she's really poor, so she has to, her and her daughter have to like work doing menial like labor. They're like making flowers for a company or something for like very little pay just to be able to afford to eat. And she she will regularly like forego food just so that her daughter can eat. And so she's always hungry because she's always letting her daughter eat instead of her. Uh, 
and like they're so poor that that for example when they have orange juice they they water the orange juice down with with one part orange juice to two parts water uh to make it stretch out for longer yeah this is a uh slice of life comedy show <laughs> about like what other show does this and the reason she's depressed now this is major spoilers because this episode is 20 episode 22 um now the great thing about this is that they it's 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 well well telegraphed like you could well i had a pretty good idea of like what had gone on but they never explicitly say it but they like imply what's happened here uh pretty pretty heavily so that you as an audience member can sort of make a guess uh like predict what's gonna what's gonna take place later uh, but when they fully explain it, it makes much more sense. And that's in episode 22. So so this is quite late in the show. It's 26 episodes. So if you, again, right now is what I'm going to say. If this sounds like anything you would enjoy, stop the video, go watch it now. Because this is, like, arguably the best episode. Episode 9 is also really good. In fact, the whole show is really good. What am I saying? Uh, so this episode, uh, it turns out the really depressed girl, woman... Do I call her a girl? So, so here's her backstory. What other slice of life show has backstories like this? She got married in high school to the only man she's ever loved. Was born with roses in her eyes. So, so her her high school lover, who was older than her, they got married in high school. She came from like a richish family. Uh, they got married, had a kid in high school. Uh, the guy then died leaving her as a widow to care for the kid alone. Uh, the kid, turns out, is adopted, which is really obvious because the kid has green hair when everyone in the mother's family has black or brown hair. Um, again, signaling stuff, like, in any other anime, it'd just be, like, not explained that one character has green hair, but, her, like, that's normal. In this show, this is a plot-relevant thing that she was adopted, so she has different colored hair. Um, and, and, uh, the, the kid says at one point, which is a really emotional line, one of my favorite lines in the show, uh, really stuck out to me, as you can tell from the fact that I remember it, uh, is, is uh, she says, because uh, she has the opportunity to move in with the, her mother's parents, so her, her grandparents who have money, and uh, she says, even though I can only eat cup, something along the lines of, uh, the cup noodles I eat with you are more delicious, right? Because they can only afford cup noodles, but because they're like that's some serious character drama shit, boy. This is some like that. That's this is some real shit. Like they have they spend the entire show, like shutting their room, making these flowers because they have to do it because they have to be able to afford food and rent, right? Like, th this show is tackling issues of, like, class divides. Because there's rich characters, too, and they, like, interact, and they have a... It's fucking sick. I'm telling you, it's fucking sick. Um, I'll leave it at that. I won't just describe every character, but, um, like, it's just so well done. It's just so impossibly well done. And, uh... So that's it. There we go. Now, there's something else I wanted to talk about. Ah, yes. So the themes of this show. This show is actually about mental health. Uh, this show is about neuro neurodivergent people. Everyone in the... Um, the reason I've been saying, like, the apartment complex is because it has a really long, complicated Japanese name that I can't pronounce. Probably made of a billion kanji. Uh, so. Oh, there's also some weird history. Like questionable law not sure if it's canon but i think they're all like reincarnated from people who used to live at the it's, it's very uh i just thought i saw something in the corner of my eye but i'm just hallucinating crazy getting lost for miles um uh it's it's very weird but it's cool uh it's cool thematically it's thematically relevant because in the in the reincarnated versions in the past versions of them the 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 depressed woman is the daughter of her daughter in modern times, which makes sense because in the show, the daughter has to take care of her mum because her mum's too depressed to do things on her own to motivate herself. 
little, and that's not even mentioned, not even brought up. It's just you just see it in a little picture at one point. I'm telling you the details, man, the details. Um, so the show's about mental health. Every character in the show has some sort of mental health disorder. So you've got. I'll talk about the ones I've talked about so far. Obviously, the 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 girl with multiple personality disorder, right? Uh, but then each of her personalities has their own little thing that could seem like a mental disorder. The the auti- the, the the girl with with the, the magic tricks is like exactly like autistic people I know in real life. Like the the way she thinks, like she says, um, I didn't want to talk to anyone because I didn't think anything I said would be interesting to them, or I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't, wouldn't think they could relate to anything I have to say, which is definitely a thought process my autistic brethren have um so so you've got the, the multiple personality disorder the pink haired girl has uh alcohol alcoholism um the the guy with the sock puppet i mean he's got clearly got something wrong with him <laughs> um the 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 girl with depression severe depression um the 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 her daughter has adhd like they all have mental disorders and this show is about which again it's like this show was fucking made for me it's about not necessarily curing people but about accepting your disease and becoming a better person with it living living with your neurodivergence and uh, having your own community of people who can accept you for who you are rather than trying to become better so that you fit into the grander society it's about creating your own community of people who can fit in together with their own special snowflake <laughs> neurodivergence if you know me that's exactly my opinions on mental health in real life god this show is so fucking good this show is so fucking good um it's not perfect I didn't say it's perfect. It's a 9 out of 10, not a 10 out of 10. This is no take you, right? I said the little nitpick about the magic tricks earlier. There's definitely some episodes that aren't as, as good. Uh, I won't lie. I'm not going to say every episode is a 10 out of 10. It's not. Some of the episodes are a little slow or, or that some of the episodes are... How do I... Like, not every joke is... The comedy in the show, though, is remarkably good. Like, there was some... Like, a lot of slice of life focus on characters like he my sketch for example is arguably a comedy but mostly you watch it because the characters are so enjoyable to hang out with right there's some very funny moments in he my sketch don't get me wrong uh but like mostly the appeal of he my sketch is that the characters are so great and in this show the characters are so great and it's fucking hilarious <laughs> And the drama is on point as well, but they don't get to the drama until you you know the characters inside and out. And uh, it has a, a good mix of... Sometimes it does the thing where it can't quite sit on an emotion without slightly undercutting it with comedy. But not, not, uh, it's, 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 it's comfortable enough with being a drama when it needs to be that uh, I'm okay with the times when it does undercut it with comedy. Um, also, this this show will sometimes beat you over the head with its themes like um but sometimes it's remarkably subtle um it's all, it's all good shit really it's pretty much all good shit um hmm. what else can i say about this uh the the uh the, oh yeah the interesting thing it, it sometimes just becomes a young comma like a the, the 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 animation style like halfway through the show it will turn into it's halfway through each episode it will turn into like a little a few panels directly adapted from the, the manga which i'm assuming is a yonkom i haven't read it but i'm assuming it is uh th- like directly basically mo- like literal moving manga animated with, with voiceover dubs and those are always quite amusing and, and, and nice uh like i feel like that could get annoying in another show that wasn't so well written but in this show, they they're always like comfy, and the style is really nice because it's like a flat, very thick, bold outlines on the characters' style, kind of flash animation esque. Uh, very nice, very well done. The character designs in the show are so strong. Just the general art style is so strong. The character, the backgrounds aren't like incredible. This is no Metropolis. 
but uh, but but the the characters themselves are always well done. Um, you get like it is very very much a me thing, but you get these these bold like early digital early ish digital coloring kind of style, uh, with you know Manabi straight, Pony Pony dash type of shit, uh, which I really like. Um, and also the characters are all quite uh, shiny. I don't know how to put it. They have a lot of highlights. Uh, they they look round. They look like like they would squidge in if you push if you p- touch them, which is uh, something I like. I like that in my character designs. Uh, they they kind of look like little little balls, <laughs> little balls of flesh. That's <laughs> not what they look like at all. It's not true at all. Um, there's there's other plot lines for these characters that I've talked about that I haven't mentioned in this video, and that's that's semi on purpose, it's, and semi because this is an unscripted rant. But uh, uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is a nine out of ten show. It's in my top ten anime of all time. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're a fan of, um, if you're a fan of of realistic dramas if you're a fan of slice of life if you're a fan of romance the romance in this show is remarkably well done like for an anime romance I, it does do the anime thing where it progresses insanely slowly <sighs> how come every anime didn't just watch Kadokano or Monogatari after Bake and, and just like realize oh we can just have characters get in a relationship and stay in that relationship, and that's also entertaining. I guess. I guess. I, c- I guess. I'm expecting too much, but but it's it's never like frustrating. It's never to the level that it is in some other shows. Like I don't know, Love Chunibyo and other de- Chunibyo Demo Koi Gashita. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use the Japanese name because I'm I'm a weeb. I'm an advanced weeb and I know Japanese. Uh, Nihongo ga shaberi masu desu. <laughs> That's not how you speak Japanese. Um, I think that means ni- Japanese speaks me. Uh, whatever. But what I'm saying is, like that show, the Chinibio, uh, you, you they spend the entire time being like, just fucking tell her your feelings. You can't just the be- stop being a cock. Just stop being a Rita. Just speak to her, you idiot. Whereas this show is like, oh, I completely understand why he he wouldn't just go straight out and tell her this because well, first of all, she's like five people in one head. Um, like he don't he don't like that's that's a difficult. Like he's not even a hundred percent sure how he feels about her. Like he he in the end he 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 obviously comes to the conclusion that he can love her and all of her the quirks that come with that like that's you know that's gonna happen but imagine if you were in that situation you love a girl except she has 20 different personalities she doesn't have 20 but she has a bunch of other people living in her head like i you know you could you could see how how that would be a struggle for someone to to wrestle with and wrestle with it our main character does here's something great the main character is not really the main character I guess he's the protagonist, but and he has episodes dedicated to him. Like he's a he's a again, not not your standard harem protagonist who's just a blank slate for 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 you to project your your own biases onto. He is like an a a he wants to be a children's picture book author, which is like a not the most common. Like that's not like an archetype I can think of. There's there's not that many characters in anime who who uh, uh, uh want to be children like main m- male main characters in a in like a, a show about a guy surrounded by a cast of females and they want to be a children's picture book author. That just doesn't happen, right? And he's like very passionate about it, but he's also like not the best. He's not terrible, and it's played for comedy he's not amazing and he's like a prodigy he's just kind of like someone who's still learning you know like a, a realistic thing for someone who's going to art school to study their passion would be and the school is like 
cool as well. The school has its own characters who only show up in the school who are also like in de- it's just fucking great the the characters in this show are just so on point every single one is so on point uh, like the teacher in the school who i think is implied just just beats students <laughs> just beats people the fuck up <laughs> I swear it's implied. No, no, this, that's that's explicitly in the text. She just beats people the fuck up. Um, there's combat maids in this show. If you're uh, if you're partial to a combat maid from now from time to time, there's combat maids. There's definitely maids in the show. If you're partial to a maid now and then, this show has what's something for everyone. If you're partial to lollies, there's lollies. If you're partial to emotos, there's emotos. If you're partial for Christmas cakes, there's Christmas cakes. If you're partial for tomboys, there's tomboys. Tsundere's, there's tsundere's. Uh, dere dere's, there's dere dere's. Genki girls, there's genki girls. Uh, occult girl, goth bitches, there's goth bitches. Big titties, small titties, in between titties, big butts, small butts. It's all there. It's all there. It's good. This show's just got, got it all. It's just got it all figured out. How long have I been recording for? I've been recording for 40 minutes. I knew this would be way too long and I'd be gushing about this show forever. Um, I, I just cannot emphasize enough how excellent the character designs are, how excellent the writing is, how excellent the directing is. It's just so good and quite well paced. And, and that's how I'm going to end it. 9 out of 10 would recommend one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, now, let's get into the, the boring logistics stuff. So you may notice this is a unscripted vlog filmed on a shitty webcam. Why is that? My Mac is back in the shop being repaired. They, they, if you don't know, I, well, I say I, through no fault of my own, the, the, the screen on my Mac was broken by the world, by just fate. <laughs> the screen on my Mac was smashed and, uh. I had to take it to the shop to get repaired, thankfully still under warranty. Uh, and when they replaced the screen, they fucked up somehow because there was a huge row of dead pixels at the bottom and at the top, like to the point where probably about a centimeter thick in each place. Uh, I'm assuming they just replaced the screen, but I don't know what they did. Either way, big row of dead pixels. Uh, to the point where it was quite difficult to use certain programs because if something was at the bottom of the screen, you just couldn't see it. Uh, like you couldn't read text there. It was, it was it was like a problem. So I decided to, to be like, "Fuckers, <laughs> you, you you better take this back and fix your bullshit." So they have done that. It's in the shop. I probably will take two weeks to get it back because that's how long it took last time. So I'm on my ThinkPad, and I don't have. Well, the, one of the only reasons I use a Mac is for two pieces of software. Number one is Logic. The main what reason is because it has Logic, which is the DAW I use to make music. Uh, I can use other DAWs, but I'm not as fast, and it's frustrating. So I prefer to use Logic. Uh, and the other reason is Final Cut. Now, I can use Premiere pretty well, but this laptop ThinkPad cannot run Premiere. It's too like low spec to to like it lags out it crashes it's just not ideal uh, so i i can't really make um the sort of edited nice videos i do want to make on this this thinkpad uh, which is why which is why this but, uh, and the other stuff i said earlier about about the script failing every time because there was too many good things to talk about and i just needed to get it all out in in like a 45 minute long video like this um now, huh, this computer makes the button look green when it's actually blue in real life. Interesting. Uh, now, the second thing I wanted to say is that this series so far has been a daily occurrence, you may have noticed. Uh, everyday videos. And that is really fucking hard to do, especially when you're watching a 24 episode, a 26 episode or 24 episode series. Right, that that's just too much. I cannot, I don't think I physically can watch twenty six episodes of anime in one day, 
and still have time to write a script, record the script, edit the audio, edit the video, render it, and upload it. I I just don't think that's like I did it. I did it for for um for fucking Negima, and I had to stay up for for twenty, I think for like thirty hours, although I finished it earlier than that. So let's say twenty four hours. I had to stay up all night watching the show because I couldn't like it's impossible for me to watch the show that quickly. Um, maybe you can do it, but I can't. And, and also, it just takes away from the enjoyment. Like if you're forcing yourself to sit through episodes when you just want to take a break, but you're like, I need to get this video done by tomorrow. It it takes away from the enjoyment of the show, and and therefore I can't think about it properly like I want to. Which was actually kind of a problem with this show, but the reverse. I was enjoying it so much that I I was. I mean, I was still thinking about analyzing it, but much less than I would be. Like, I was distracted by the show being too good. Um, really, I would need a rewatch to to pick apart exactly what makes this show perfect. Maybe one day I will do a long scripted video just saying how amazing I love the show. Uh, whatever. Uh, so this this series is no longer daily. Uh, I'm gonna try and do like every other day. Uh. I don't know how well it's going to work. Uh, I'll try and do every other day reviews. I doubt I'm going to find a series as good as this. <laughs> I feel like I've peaked early. Uh, I am so amazed that I have never heard of this show. No one ever talks about it. No one I've mentioned it to knows it. Uh, also, I didn't mention the main review. This show has some great reaction faces to use on your, your, your image boards of choice or whatever. Like, like if you go through and just screenshot faces you're gonna have some great material there uh, thanks to the character designs um yeah so so this series is now going to be less not 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 daily maybe maybe i'll do some like if i if i drop a show at episode one there's nothing stopping me from from just watching and have a show the next day like that's easy but if if it's a show that i actually want to finish as a lot of these shows coming up are gonna be like uh for example, let me get up the, the 2005 list. So for winter, I think so far this is the this is the only one I well only only Negima and and this I've I've finished so far. A and for shows that look promising, uh oh yeah, there's other things I'm gonna do. So so next up is Zeno Saga the animation, then which I I don't think I'm gonna like. Uh, but I might, you never know. Uh, Starship Operators, which I don't think I'm going to like, but I might. Uh, Precure, Max Heart, uh, which I don't think I'm going to watch because it's 47 episodes, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, Buzzer Beaters, which I can almost guarantee you I'm not going to like. Uh, Gallery Fake, which kind of looks like shit. Uh, it's also 37 episodes, so I'm going to skip that one. I'm not watching anything longer than 26. Uh, Damake, Dameko Dobutsu, which I've never heard of before. I think it's a kid's show, I'm not sure. Damako Dobutsu, what does that mean? Damako, bad, bad child. Dobutsu, what's Dobutsu? Like animal? Is it animal? I don't remember what Dobutsu means, but whatever. Uh, I, I, I might watch that. That might be good. I just don't know. Uh, but we're getting into the shows that almost no one has seen now, like less than like less than ten thousand users on now. Uh, Jinky Extended, which looks like it has some really nice character designs that I'm gonna like, but it's also a mecha show which I'm not particularly into, so I don't know. UG Ultimate Girls. Uh, I think this also was a mecha show. Uh, I think this is like a, a somewhere between a mecha and a. Um, like, what's it called? Carmen Rider esque show. And then, so I, you know, I'm gonna watch these, but I don't think I'm gonna finish. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna end up dropping both of those. Masuda Kosuke. What the fuck? Masuda Kosuke. Uh, Gekijo Gag Manga Biori. Gag man Gag Manga Biori is an anime that is about absolutely nothing. Oh my god, this that's my shit. Uh, it's comprised of 12 short stories, 5 minutes long each, that only build up a small... Yes, okay, I'll definitely finish that. Uh, Transformers. Oh yeah, there's a whole season of Transformers Galaxy Force, which is 52 episodes. Definitely not finishing that. Uh, 
Then Magical Kernan, which is a a thirteen episode Magical Girl show. Uh, from the character design alone, I think this is my shit. It she looks exactly like Sakura from Card Get the Sakura, like like it's a clear rip off, but more two thousand and five, which is my shit. Uh, now I don't know if it's gonna be any good, but I, I I'm definitely watching that. Like I I I I have high hopes for that shit. Although it does look like the sort of show that that would uh, turn into do what I said in this v- video, it would turn into a stupid drama after episode three. Um, Lime Iro Dukitan X Ekusu. Should I say Ekusu? Am I am I doing that? Am I doing Ekusu? Lime Lime Iro Dukitan Ekusu. Uh, I I don't think I'm gonna like that at all. It's like a it seems like a harm show, like a military harm show, which is not my shit. Uh, then a, a second season, which I'm skipping, and then a bunch of weird shows that I've never heard of, uh, that no one's ever heard of, like with with only a couple hundred members on now. And then after that, we're going to be finished with 2005, and you know what's going to happen then? A, re- a review of all, a, a summary of everything that came out in winter 2005. Then we're going to go to spring. Now I'm just gonna since I'm here I may as well just talk about everything that I feel like mentioning. Uh, we got Eureka Seven, which I've already dropped, uh, so I'll, I'll probably do a video about why I dropped that. Uh, maybe I'll do a long video on Eureka Seven. Oh, there's gonna be a break between spring and winter, by the way. So it's a, a lot of these shows like don't look very good, like they're not my thing. Uh, Trinity Blood, I don't think I'll like that. I Shield 21, that's 145 episodes. Fuck you. Just fuck you. All of these are too long. I can't watch 24 episode shows. I'm made of meat. Um, I don't know. A lot of these don't look that good. Oh, but Kodekawa Tashi no Goshijun Sama. That's, uh, I believe, the same mangaka as fucking Hidamari Sketch. And you know, I love Hidamari Sketch. So, I mean, it's also Gainax and Shaft collaboration. So, <laughs> fuck yes, that might be sick. Uh, that might be really good. Oh, Fruitical Alternatives on there. I'm definitely finishing Fruitical Alternative. I already love that show. Um, Mod, definitely not going to like that. So, say no Aquarium, not going to like that. Gark- yeah, a lot of these are going to be bad. Just a lot of these are going to be bad. Comic Party Revolution, Legend of Duo, I think I might, I might like, uh, be so bad it's good like or something like a lot of legend of, of duo i looked at the reviews it's like half one out of tens half ten out of tens it's, <laughs> it seems like my sort of show very divisive i love shit like that like it really at the very least i know it's going to be interesting which is really all i care about there's so many weird shows released in 2005 that's why i just love this shit oh yeah and onagama and melodies on here i forgot about that that's 52 episodes, but I think I will review it just because I've always seen some of it and I have some, some stuff. Uh, yeah, we've got some second seasons. Then we get to the really good shit, yeah, Ichigo Marshmallow. Summer? Summer is really where, where, where 2005 just goes from like a mediocre year to a 10 out of 10 year. Ichigo Marshmallow, Pony Pony Dash, Kami Chu. Right? All of those are like some of my favorite shows. Pony Pony Dash and Ichigo Marshmallow have both been on my top 10 at various points. And Kamichu is, I think, has also been on my top 10 at some point. It's it's definitely in my top, like, 50. Uh, Kamichu is fucking great. I can't wait to talk about Kamichu. And there's other stuff that I want to talk about here as well. Uh, and then Fall also has some great shows. Like... Uh, load please mushishi shakuga no shana uh aria the animation rosen maiden like fucking come on my atome like it's like it's like this year was made for me it's like i was born in the wrong generation um yeah, there's a bunch of fucking top tier shit in 2005 man Anyway, I, I, wow, wow, this is not what this video was supposed to be at all. This is completely off the rails. Why did nobody stop me? Go go, go watch Mahoraba. Go go watch it. It's too good for you to not be watching it right now. Unless you hate Slice of Life, in which case, uh, go jump off a cliff. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, favorite, and subscribe. 
I don't know why I said that. Favorites don't even matter. Favorites haven't mattered since like 2007. And people still say like, favorite, and subscribe. Favorites don't matter on the YouTube algorithm. You do know that when you say that, you YouTubers, right? Favorites don't matter. A like, comment, and subscribe would be much better. Uh, actually, I'd be interested to hear your comments. I, I want to know. I want you to go watch the show and then, and then not that anyone's watching till till an hour into this video. But if you do, uh, and and you watch the show and you feel like commenting to tell me what you thought of it, I'd be very interested to hear that. I want to know other people's thoughts on it because this is a show that specifically appeals to my autism, uh, and I don't know. I don't know if everyone's gonna feel the same way about it. So you know, let me let me know what you thought. Uh, and subscribe for more of every show in 2005 uh, oh yeah and i better not forget this bit uh if you've enjoyed w watching me be autistic for uh an hour and you want to help me do it more often patreon link is right there uh maybe i'll be able to afford some some food and not have to live like that depressed girl with with only barely any food to live off of so that would be nice um I need, to, I need to buy more vape liquid, man. I need to buy more vape liquid and, and anime memes. I need to buy my obscure anime memes. My memes are so obscure I have to pay for them on the dark net with Monero. That's right. I don't use Bitcoin. I use Monero. Anyway, uh, that's good. That's good for now. I think that's a good video. I think I've made this a good... I think I'm happy. Yeah. 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 I'm definitely going to revisit this show with a scripted review at some point, though. Don't worry. This show deserves some, some real brand recognition. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling.